the floors and ceilings on an airspace. The first thing you want to look for is you want to look for the lines of the airspace, right? So airspace lines are either magenta colored or they're blue. We have the solid blue of class Bravo. And don't worry about this little label right here. So disregard. You have class Bravo, class B, which is blue. And that's over here on this one. Class Charlie, which is solid magenta, which we have on this one. Then you have class Delta, which is the dash blue, which you'll see here. And then you have class Echo, which is going to be shaded where it goes from like a heavy magenta and then the line fades. And then you can see that right here. So that's class Echo. Class G has no markings, but class E also has another marking where it's dashed magenta lines. And that's when it tells you it goes to the surface. So anyways, we want to look for those five lines. And then for the ceilings and the floors, we want to look for the numbers that are in the same color as those lines. So in this first example, we have class C lines right here, right here, we have here, here. And the reason they're shaped like this is it's all about IFR and VFR traffic. Okay, and how they come into the airport. They want the approaches, descents, and also the climb outs to be perfectly right. They want to make sure you stay in that airspace as you're coming down so that they can make sure you are away from other traffic. So that's why they're shaped weird, right? And especially when you get into class C, class B, they get more and more complex. So class C right here, we have this magenta and we want to look for magenta numbers. So we have some here, we have some here, and then we have some here even have some here. So when you get a question like this on the FA written that says, what is the floor of the class Charlie or class Bravo or whatever, in this case, the class Charlie, above a certain point, right? It might say above Baldwinsonville. Like what is the floor and ceiling of class Charlie airspace? That's when you want to look for these things I have circled, these magenta numbers, where it's going to have one number over another number. You want to find the number. So if we're looking over Baldwinsonville right here, which section of the class Charlie is Baldwinsonville in? It will be in this section here. This little outline right here, that's where Baldwinsonville is located in, right? Right here. The numbers that are also in this section are right here. So they say 44 over 16. These are in terms of hundreds of feet MSL. When you hear hundreds of feet MSL, all you have to do is add two zeros to the numbers. So 44 is going to be 4,400 and it's MSL. Airspaces on charts are always in terms of MSL, okay? They want to keep it in terms of MSL all the time so that we all have a standard that we're working off of. And then that's over 1,600 feet MSL. So the floor, the altitude where it starts, is 1,600 feet MSL in this section of the airspace only. And then the ceiling where class C ends is 4,400 feet MSL. Right here, this section right here, what is the floor of the Class C airspace? Okay, so yep, 2700 and then the ceiling would be 4400. Over here, we got 2300 and 4400 and then we already talked about this one and then this one, what about SFC? What does SFC mean when you see that as the floor? surface so that means it goes all the way to the ground level as soon as you take off from this airport in Syracuse Hancock International as soon as you leave as soon as you're on the ground even because you're above the surface when you're just sitting on the ground you're in the class Charlie airspace if you stay in this little circle the only way to get out is to go climb straight up and get out above 4400 feet and then you'd be out of the class Charlie does anyone see another airspace maybe look here somewhere in the corners. Does anyone see another airspace here on this chart here, this one here? Anybody see another airspace, signs of another airspace? Class E. Yep, so we got here, top right. We even got it down here in the bottom right and then a little bit right here. It depends on what side of the class E you're on. So if we're where I'm at in green, so we're outside of the class E here, and then we're on the inside, so we're on the light shaded class echo. What does that mean? Where does the class echo start? I mean, we take off from the surface, we're not in class Charlie, but are we in class echo? Or when does that start? What do we have to climb to to get into class echo?
It is 700 feet on the inside of the shaded. And then what about on the outside? The outside is 1200. We got 700 for class E and then 1200 outside. So outside of this would be 1200. So this is class Bravo. We don't have a label for the floor and ceiling because the snapshot I have doesn't include it. The only two labels we have are here and here. All right, so I'm not gonna ask you a question about this area here, but just know that this has its own floor and ceiling that is labeled somewhere on the chart, okay? So every single section right here, this is a section that is completely enclosed, right? It has its own thing here. This one right here, Sometimes they're so small like this one that they can't fit these numbers inside of it, right? So what they do is they draw it outside of it and then they do this blue dotted arrow to show you that this means for this area here. When it's a really busy chart like the one we'll get to next, that can be hard to find. So you really gotta make sure that the floor and ceiling you find for your airspace when you're answering a question on FAA written or you're even just planning a flight, you gotta make sure that it's the right one. That, so you really gotta scan the chart well, make double sure, all right? What is the floor and ceiling of this area right here? So this area right in here, what's the floor and ceiling of the Class Bravo? $2,500 and $10,000. All right, so now, as you can see, we're getting a little bit more complex because what else do you guys see? You guys also see a dash blue line in here, right? What is dash blue line? That's class delta. This dash blue line, where does the class delta start and where does it end? Class delta starts at the surface. It always starts at the surface, okay? You're not gonna see a fraction. You're not gonna see one number over another number like you will in Class Bravo and Charlie. You're just gonna see one number in these like box. And that one number is either gonna have a minus sign in front of it or no minus sign. So this three zero, we add two zeros to that, okay? So that means 3,000, but it's got a minus sign in front of it. And what that minus sign means is it means that the 3,000 foot is not included in the class delta, that minus sign. So this minus sign right here. So that means it's to the surface to 2999. Now you might think, why the hell does this matter? You think I'm really gonna be flying within the accuracy my altitude of, within an accuracy of one single foot? No, that's not why they do that. The reason they do that is every single altitude has to have an airspace, especially in very trafficked areas. And most of that is for like legal reasons, right? You know, if someone is in a class Bravo when they shouldn't be. So what this means is it goes from the surface to 2999. And then above that, that's when this area here, even though we can't see the label for the floor and ceiling of this, we can guess that this area here for the class Bravo starts at 3000 feet MSL. We can guess that because we know that the class Delta ends at 2999. It doesn't go up to 3000. That's usually why you'll see a minus sign, right? Is when there's a class Bravo or class Charlie above the class Delta. Otherwise you probably won't see the minus sign. It'll probably just have no minus sign. I'll just say to 3000. Okay, this is the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This is a chart straight from the FAA written exam. It's super complex, super busy. So you really have to look out for these blue dotted lines. You'll see there's one, here's one here. So much information on here that they can't put things where they want to to make sense. So they gotta add these lines. Honestly, I wish they would add more lines. This is craziness, right? So this right here, this is the Cowboy VOR, or VOR DME and it's pointing to where that is located, right? So things like that. We got a class delta here. We got this really squiggly line. Why is this line squiggly? Why a class Bravo airspace line would be squiggly? Why is this one so squiggly? All these other ones are straight circles or straight lines. Makes sense, right? Draw on the map, let's make it a straight line. Look at this little section in here. Look, you see that dotted line right here? Why would you have a squiggly line?
The reason is for pilots to use pilotage and dead reckoning. So usually what you'll find is there's going to be a road right underneath that. I think we can even find an example. I see right here, this little squiggly. You see how the, it continues on this road? So roads are easy to see for pilots, right? So you know that if you're flying, you know, you're flying this way right here, and you cross this road, you know, while you're flying, you're like, okay, the floor changed to 2,500, ceiling is 10,000. You know, it's an easy identifier for pilots. So they like to use that when they can, when it makes sense, and it kind of coincides something that they would want to do anyways.